so far. My name is Hawker, joined by Dean. How are we doing, Dean? I'm doing good. Not as good as Faze are, of course, already haven't confirmed themselves the first spot in their group. So, as you said, yeah, being kind of on opposite ends of the group at this point, this matchup not really having any effects on anything that's going to happen. There is obviously three other games going on elsewhere, which are going to be deciding who's going to be getting that second place in the group. But yeah, we can still have a bit of, a bit of fun with this one, of course, Hawka. As you said, Inferno here to kick things off. D2 then being the second map, and if needed, there is Nuke as the decider. So it could be certainly an exciting one, I think, here on... On Inferno, especially, Contact can be a very capable team. They picked up some good victories as of late. And FaZe, on the other hand, they've been a little bit shaky on it. Dropping at the team such as Copenhagen Flames. And also losing against Nort, who haven't looked too, fana uh, too fantastic lately. Grouping up on Banana. It's been a slow one so far. Yeah, that's something we have noticed about Contact is that whenever they're playing on, on their map picks, they normally do pretty well. They normally put up a good fight, but it's when they play their opponent's maps or maybe the third map deciders that they seem to struggle the most. In most of their losses, they've actually won their map choice. So on Inferno here, they'll hope to have a good chance as they execute onto this B site. Yeah, with the smokes down, we'll actually keep those CTs out for the moment. A very quick flank going to be coming in. Ships is able to spot it, though, and take himself at least one. The issue is it's immediately then traded Ooh. back. Esperanto, a little bit of a gamble pushing into the spawn right there. Finds himself a quick double headshot. And I was going to say, could now help Letney with dealing with that final player in construction. But instead, he does move back. And we'll find that player towards Banana. A two-on-one, the man advantage again being found for contact. The timing there was just a little bit awkward for Otto. Eventually does peek back in and... Yeah, now known exactly where Olaf is, they are actually finally given the room to get that bomb planted. But against Olaf, they do need to be careful. It could still be kind of difficult, but as I say that, tapping away on the Glock, Otto is going to have that final kill that they needed. And yeah, contact, get, they get off to a good start. They're able to pick up the pistol here on Inferno for themselves. And as I said, this is the map that we're going to be looking at. Them definitely needing to take the victory here if they want any chance in the series. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Esperanto really made that round for contact with that play on the, the CT smoke, just getting both those kills. Basically turns the tides of the round entirely. It basically, I think, puts them in a position to win that one. So well played by Esperanto. And contact definitely have some players capable of popping off. Another one of the European mixed teams where we thought we might see some more of these European squads come through and, and we are starting to see that with teams like contact and godsend that there's more mixed nationality teams coming in phase were obviously the pioneers in that aspect of the game and speaking of phase they've gone for the four spy here in the second round plenty of deagles and a scalp in the hands of brocky brocky brokey i never know which one to say uh i've always gone with brokey but... yeah brokey sounds more correct to me i don't know why I, I don't know, you shouldn't be asking an Irishman how you should pronounce anything. That's true. But yeah, contact. Parents. Contact are going to be moving into B. It, as you said, just the pistols and the scout normally can be quite dangerous, especially in the hands of phase players. I was going to say it's going to be hard though for them to do anything with those smokes down. Ryan though does still manage to actually get a couple of kills, give them a chance now. It delays massively, especially. You can see the bomb as of yet to be recovered. Ships gets a nice kill over that. Uh, smoking towards the CT spawn though. So with that, they should be looking pretty good. But there we go. Brokey on the scout instantly shuts me up. Otto's tagged up a bit as well. So for the Deagle and the scout, that helps out massively. I am certainly a little bit afraid for contact right now. Every time they get into B, this is the same as that previous round where they are just slowed down and they're just forced to keep taking fights. It does again go in their favor, but that's very worrying when they're going to be going up against full gun rounds in a little while. Yeah, they haven't really been too comfortable in these early round wins, but they get them on the board. That's the main thing that matters. Again, the money is going to be basically fully invested here, but now this should be a chance for Contact to build up some cash. At the same time, FaZe, if they even get a couple of kills in this round, will be dropping rifles because Contact only have full rifles in this round. They don't have any SMGs. So it would be costly if Contact also lost a couple of players in this round. Then you'd really start to see that economy not be too strong heading into the first gun round. But right now, FaZe are fully stacked on Banana and it looks like Contact may have avoided them as they group up over on the A side of the map. Again, we, we, we always say this when you see a team on one of these ecos and they take the gamble stack. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. But if it had of, if they had a move towards B, there would have been a good chance. They might still actually be able to catch a couple players off guard a bit now as they move from the bottom of mid. 
taking their time for sure, but considering they didn't really invest anything, if they can just set themselves up afterwards for a few exits, that would be perfect. Okay, Esperanto peeking back down mid, does spot pretty much everyone from the CT side, and actually just calls in for his teammates to peek back in and help. And they do end up dealing with it, but when there was only $200 of investment there onto a flash for FaZe, I don't think they're really going to be uh, be feeling too upset about the fact that they were still able to get two kills out of it. Yeah, not too bad for them. Heading into this first gun round now. They're able to get the AWP straight into the hands of Brokey. And the rest of the team have rifles to work with. And if they do go on to win this round, Contact's money might be a question mark. I think it depends whether Contact get the, the bomb plant or not. If they get the bomb plant, they'll probably have a good amount of cash left behind. But here comes some early nades on Banana. This is a staple of Inferno. You always see these nades exchanged early as the teams jostle for map control. But it's Contact who have been given the Banana control at the start of this round. Take a small bit of damage for their troubles, but it is not the biggest of deals, as you said, at least being able to get this control around Banana is leaving them in a decent enough position. They didn't actually clear out the top of it exactly, so you can see still using a bit of utility to Molotov and such going down on the sandbags, flush any CTs back, as their main goal for the moment is to go ahead and advance forward on towards mid, give themselves all of the options really open up everywhere on the map as a possibility. Brokey, though, going to stick around on short. Does manage to find himself one with the up and then immediately falls back to support his teammate with that flash. You have, I believe, Cold Zero ready to hold on long. The flash was a little bit preemptive, so he at least was given the room to get around to the smoke, but as the T's eventually do pop out on long, you see Emmy getting one, you see Ships then being able to catch that aggression in towards the apartments, and then Roki's in so much trouble, pinned in the back of the bomb site with an up, getting double peeked. There was really nothing that he could do about that one. I think this might be done. It's the save already being called for. They've begun to back away, and understandably so. Yeah, that's a, a rough one for FaZe. Even though the trades didn't look too bad to begin with, they end up losing control of everything. A couple of nice kills from Ships, who's been one of the players for contacts that's been a bit quieter than, than you might want. I think you want Ships to be one of the star players on this team. And so far in this tournament, he's not quite been hitting those heights which I think is part of the problems that Contact have been having. But it's kind of hard to single out one player for Contact when they've lost every game so far. I think it's obvious that there's a, a bigger problem there. Not so far on Inferno, though. They've got a 4-0 lead against FaZe Clan. Coming out with a strong start, and we will have a pause come through here. This is a technical timeout taken by FaZe Clan. Apparently, they're having some team speak issues very early into this game. Second time we've had TeamSpeak issues today, Dean. Yeah, there was some loss in the previous matchup for Hard Legion, I believe it was. Going into the overtime, they had to get a new TeamSpeak server. They were given one by one the admins. One of the admins was like, here, hop on this one, because she's having trouble. It was taking a while. But uh, yeah, 4-0 for contact. They're off to a really good start here on Inferno so far. Apparently, uh, apparently we're still a little bit low on the volume. I'm, I'm not too sure about that, Hawkeye. There is a few people mentioning it. We try to fix it in between games, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I've increased the game volume like four times today at this point. Yeah, no it's matter how much more you put it up, it's apparently still too low. Yeah. Unless you have some sort of thing turning it down automatically when I'm speaking. Maybe do you have that Discord setting on? I don't know. That's a good question. Because, of course, we are doing it from um, from home. Hawk is in his, in his home running the stream right now. I'm on Discord with him. And we had no issues yesterday. They all just started today out of nowhere. It was really weird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It seems like there's a different issue every day that I'm trying to deal with, but I'm too much of a noob to deal with them. <laughs> like, in terms of technical issues, I feel like I'm basically a bit of a boomer. I'm going to be honest. I'm not, I'm not good at computers. Hopefully, FaZe are good at computers, though, Dean. It is their job. They're good at computer games. Anyway, we know that. At the very least. Slow start here on Inferno. But as we mentioned, the actual outcome of this game affects nothing. And I was thinking that would probably help FaZe, if I was being honest. Like, the, the pressure being completely taken off them. It, there's, there's really nothing that they can lose. So they can make those plays. They can allow for their individuals to be a little bit more free, perhaps. Contact, on the other hand, if they could get this win, that would at least be nice for them confidence-wise. And their results definitely on the board. But as we said, there's no room for them to move up. They are in eighth right now. It's not really going to be helping them out at all, even if they do get this victory. In this one, though, just a couple of saved rifles for phase. We're not really expecting a lot from them, but it is Rain and Nico. So who knows? Definitely 
Definitely some very capable players on the phase side with the rifles in hand. Otto taking this fight with the Orc. A bit of a risky one, but he wins the battle up against Olof Meister. So a clean pick to kick things off here in round number five. Contacts looking to continue their early success here on the T side of Inferno. Right now, though, the bomb is back at T ramp. If Emmy loses this fight, that could be an issue here. They don't want to lose the bomb. And you can see Emmy now, I think, realizing that, playing a bit safer. That phase just continue to hold back and wait to see what Contact are going to do. They're eventually going to swing in towards Banana. So that was a flash thrown in from Rain's teammate up towards the top of Banana, I believe, being Nico. Unfortunately, wasn't really able to get anything done with it. And at this point now, with three on five, one of the rifles going down in a position as well where they're not really able to retrieve it. Contact, I believe, realizing that there is a chance that rifle could still be over towards B. Have made what is probably the correct decision, but they still have to deal with a couple of deagles here as they move forward. Cold already getting one, but he's pinned in on Graveyard. And I mean, with a name like that, it kind of does... It does spell out the fate for you at that point of the player. That was just nasty. Otto, I, yeah. I don't even know what to say to that. It, it looked like he should have went down, but nah. Flicks over the headshot as well. Slightly overkill, man. Chill. Yeah, calm it down, Otto. If he starts doing that in gun rounds, then I'll be really impressed. Against the pistols, it's like, yeah, nice shot. Good job. Let's see if he can keep it up, because... Brocky's got the AWP on the CT side as well. Heading into round number six, FaZe Clan still searching for their first round win here on Inferno. We were saying that Contact really need to win this map. Well, it's looking good for them so far with an early lead. Yeah, a little bit of damage at least to get into this round for FaZe, but we've seen that before. Contact most of the time here are being allowed to actually challenge up Banana, get themselves that control quite easily, apart from that previous round where FaZe did try and actually fight aggressively. In this one, though, they do stack three over on B in the beginning, so that's a little bit of a switch up from them. Normally, when you put three towards B, obviously, you will go a little bit more aggressive. You'll try and take the control around the bottom and at least get an op or someone jumping around that wall at the top so that you can, at that point, actually rotate someone back over to A. But that's not what they're doing. So it is going to be just leaving Cold Zero and Olaf to hold down this A side of the map where Contact already have prepared pretty much all of their players to move forward. They are beginning to actually push through Banana, though, so this will begin to find info. Yeah, will FaZe be able to rotate over to the A site in time, though? Because it's two players pushing Banana. One of their other players is now rotating over to A all the way through a Library. And because Contact are taking so much time here, the flank could very well come through. Nico's about to line up two players. Spray from behind. Good onto both men. Now Contact have got to quickly take control of this A bomb site. But there are plenty of players waiting for them. Olaf takes the first fight. And even though the bomb is planted, Contact are pretty much trapped here on short on the bomb site. And I feel like FaZe are very aware of that. They've got a player in pit. They've got players in all these positions. So they just have to focus on the site itself where Emmy. Maybe about to take some contact. Nico coming out from the apartment. So this Molotov will clear out another corner of the site. And finally, Olaf pulls the trigger. Nico able to trade his teammate. And FaZe do a good job there at just staying fully in control of that retake. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're going to get Nico on it. Rain did have time though, right? Because he was on it before the, the music started going. But better safe than either sorry, way, Nico with the kit. Yeah, better better safe than sorry. It's, it's all good. They knew they 100% had time with the kit. They looked a little bit delayed between the swap though, and it was making me worry a tiny mm. bit. It was kind of like, uh, hello? We could just get on it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, FaZe, as you said, they are able to overcome that retake. They weren't phased by the fact that contacts were already up 5 0. They will begin to try and actually pull back this CT side now on Inferno. Really, though, if they want to be coming out with a CT side they can be happy with, they don't really want to be dropping any more than just one round over to Contact, because once they hit six, they do start to feel kind of comfortable. Obviously, not against a, a team like FaZe, especially also when you do have such a strong start, they're going to want to add a lot more. But for FaZe to get a CT side that they say, yeah, that was actually a really good CT side, they want to be coming up to around nine, at least, you would say. Again, looking like it is going to be a bit of a quicker A play from the T side because they've been restricted from this banana control. This time, though, FaZe, they do go more aggressive with it. They get this information a lot earlier on. But as I say, that contact have already begun to move forward around on long towards that A side of the map. They're going to be setting up this wrap on towards the A bomb site, most likely. But they've left the bomb behind for now. Now, yeah, we'll see how that comes into play because there have been some pushes down banana. I think that's what Emmy's watching for in this round, but... 
doing it with the bomb could definitely be a question mark. No push on Banana this time for Faze, though. They've only got one man there, so it's up to the fights over a long. And Esperanto wins the first one. Now they can push into CT spawn. Coldzera is ready for it, though. He gets another kill in reply, and Esperanto caught with his knife out. Finally, Emmy finds the refrag, but he's alone with the bomb, and he needs that kill. Great shot from Emmy. That's a fight he had to win because he was alone with the bomb there, but he gets the instant kill and leaves it all in the hands of Brocky. Who is not going to have a good time. Yeah, ship's just creeping through the apartment, spots him lurking around there. The goal obviously being to save the off if he could have done so. It would have helped him out quite a bit. Maybe can't really be afforded. If he had a lived as well, he could have dropped the ro uh, rifle over to Olaf, and then at that point, everyone else could have bossed it. It would have actually been on a pretty good buy. But it wasn't allowed. It is only pistols now for FaZe into this round. They got one. They immediately had contact, just bounced back with another round win themselves, and contact are looking fairly good here, but eh, FaZe, they're not having a good time, really. And I, I mean, I gave a little bit of a warning in the beginning. That this map has been a little bit iffy for FaZe. They lost it to Copenhagen Flames. They lost it to Nord, who I said haven't been that impressive. And they lost it very convincingly to Fnatic, which is a little bit less surprising. Fnatic are, of course, a very solid team. But that's a good opening. Nico and a Deagle. Name a better duo. And indeed, getting a kill over towards Banana. He is immediately out to fall back off. And they do have a man advantage. Unfortunately, no weapons going to be retrieved from a contact. They can get rid of that rifle and just ensure it won't be picked up anytime soon. So they are still in a pretty decent position. Yeah, throwing away that AK right there. Going to be the op in the hands of Esperanto now. Smokes exchanged on the B-bomb site. Still a couple of smokes left for FaZe. If they want to try and run down the clock with those. A third player rotated over to the B side of the map for FaZe Clan. Again, whenever FaZe have these sorts of rounds, it looks, it feels to me like they always just go for the, the full Deegs because they know they can land their headshots. They know they're very capable of putting the pressure on their opponents with just the pistols. And Contact uh, respecting it. They're going for a full B execute here, but Brokey, oh, quick shot onto the man, jumping. Brokey makes it two Ooh. kills. They can't cross to the site safely, but a second smoke for CT should allow them to get the bomb. They're being very cautious here, though, on the contact side, and there's a big gap in that CT smoke. That's something they're going to have to be aware of. More like there's a bit of smoke on the gap. Was, Pretty uh, much. <laughs> that was, you can see everything around it. Yeah, the bomb does get retrieved, so it's going to be planted. But good work by Brokey, bringing it into a position now where the, the rest of his teammates do have a chance to move in. They have a smoke, they have the three deagles, and where Esperanto especially being low right now, this is still incredibly winnable for them. Brokey in towards the spawn, though, as he tries to peek in to maybe find a little bit more, has been tagged down extremely low. Cold Zero to rips the head of ships off, and Esperanto screwed. He's just pinned in the back corner. There was... Absolutely zero that he could do right there, if we were being honest. He needed to hit an incredibly quick op shot and somehow get back into cover. And at that point, the other two players would have been pushing him down and he would have just likely gotten pincered in on. So not a lot that could have been done. But yeah, Brokey, his double kill around that smoke right there actually been able to delay the bomb plan for so long. That was massive. Yeah, that was a brilliant round from Brokey there with the deke. He was so quick on the kills as well. That's what impresses me the most. He's landing those headshots even while pulling the trigger very, very quickly. Especially on that last kill. He basically didn't give the opponent a chance to react. And now that FaZe have won that round with the Desert Eagles, Contact's money is pretty much fully invested into this round. So this is FaZe's chance to get themselves in control here on their CT side. To start to build some momentum if they can win this round. And it all comes off the back of just winning with those pistols. So that just shows how winning one of those rounds can really change things as Cold Zero sits behind the smoke, double spray down, and he stops contact in their tracks with Brocky also getting a kill on the hold. Yeah, that works. That's a good way to pick it up. Cold Zero finding two through the smoke. Brocky even shut down the attempted apartments control as well from contact. We will eventually see Nico fall in there. Being caught still aggressive around Banana. The smoke though that has been put down, unfortunately going to stop them from really being able to advance forward for the moment, especially as they are still separated. I mean, the bomb is alone right now with Emmy. They have the other player in the with auto, of course, being over towards the apartments. He'll be waiting to, I guess, see if anyone was trying to aggress around this area. And well, he's still trying to probe around mid, but the issue is his teammate is, is just going to be dropped. Did Rain go through that smoke? Unfortunately, we are stuck on auto uh, director for this game. I think it was... Uh, I miss you, Jakey and Zarks. I think we got to see it was Emmy trying to just make a play on B and Emmy pushed through the smoke and just Rain was waiting. I, 
I, I only seen it on the radar, so I just presumed that wasn't what happened because <laughs> it didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a weird one. Oh, we should probably switch to uh, Otto right now, who's trying to save. Auto directors having other ideas, though. Yeah, we, we are part of time observers during this one as well, since we don't have one, oh, Absolutely. Hawk is a producer, so an observer, and a caster. He's just incredible. And some might say I'm not good at any of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's always haters. Oh, Otto He's gets one. It's, he should be able to save, just because you don't imagine anyone else on phase tries to hunt them. The only player who's kind of close enough was Olaf, and he decides, nah, I'm not going to go for that. Even though he has a bit of money, he just wants to keep the AK, and obviously they've only now gotten their third round back. Ideally, they don't really want to be dropping any more rounds, but if they were to, they want to make sure they have that economy in the reserve to be able to buy back in straight away. Because if they were put on an eco at that point, they'd be giving away way too much to contact. Again, for anyone who may have just joined us recently, because we've like doubled in viewers since the uh, the map itself started, there's not really anything on the line here because FaZe have already confirmed themselves that first spot in the group, and Contact, on the other hand, have been yet to win a series. Yeah, that, that is something that's on the line, Dean. Contact's pride is on the line. If they want to get one win in this group at the very least. And it would be nice for them to get this win against FaZe Clan especially. Even if it is under strange circumstances, I guess. Rocky again has picked up the AWP in this round. Letney has taken a nade to the face, down to 15 health. Those nades, when you don't have Kevlar especially, are pretty deadly sometimes. This round, though, obviously, mainly just down to Otto, who saved that AWP. He's, I think, just waiting to see if players are going to peek him, but FaZe are playing this nice and safe. They know that the AWP was saved, so they can just cautiously sit back on the bomb sites and force contact to make the plays here. Yeah, and that's not what you want with an op on the T side of Inferno. It, a lot of teams won't even bother pulling the op out on the T side of Inferno unless they are against a team that plays fairly aggressive, which FaZe are not going to be doing when they know that the op is probably the only weapon that they have in play. Of course, with it being saved, with only pistols being afforded on a couple of players even. So yeah, you can see how passive they actually are playing. Just even playing off of the B bomb site, they're both in towards the spawn. Instead, Rain will try and take a bit of contact. Obviously, then they have the boost up from Nico as well. Rain actually gonna go around the edge of the smoke. Okay, having an easy time so far. Finds himself the ace. I was gonna say that was a risky play, but he shut me up real quick. Just did not look like a challenge whatsoever for no. Rain there. Absolutely mows them down. I think he got a couple through the smoke to start with and then just mops up the rest of the team. And Otto, sadly, doesn't have much money after the previously saving the AWP. So he's stuck on a Galil this round without a helmet as well. FaZe have got the double AWP setup rolling of their own, though. Nico, currently the secondary AWPer in this round. He's using his sniper on Banana, where contacts are going to be pushing. The boost was being assembled, but the Molotov forces them away. So Nico's AWP doesn't get the chance to pull the trigger just yet. Throws that nade, though. That does a lot of damage. Yeah, onto Esperanto. One of the more impactful, well, potentially most impactful players for sure for contact when he's showing up. So that's going to make things a little bit more complicated for him. As I said, not going to have the, the op out now. Not really by choice. I'm sure they would have gone for it if they could have, but being very limited after losing that previous round there. Uh, rather, after uh, eco in that previous round, still not really having everything they could have wanted. Brokey, he's going to find one coming out mid. If they try and hunt him down, they will have no idea that the attack the apartments right now is just completely stacked up. You have Cold Zero still waiting. Close ships eventually comes in to see if he can find that player who is backing away. Haven't heard the footsteps, but not allowed to do so. Brokey, oh, actually misses, gets the deagle out now. And there we go, eventually puts Otto down. That's really the only way to put it. That's exactly what that was. The bomb does get planted for contact, but now they're in a two on four after plant. Really, FaZe should not be losing on this retake. They have plenty of nades. They have kits on everyone. The only real risk, I guess, is having that double up setup. It can complicate things a small bit. Yeah, hopefully those nades will maybe get them some fights, though. If they molly pit, for example, Letney will be forced into the open, and that's where the orcs can just hold it down. But Letney, with a quick kill onto the first player, he's forced out into the open, though, and Letney eventually hunted down. So it's up to Esperanto in the mini pit. They've got to be aware that this is a likely position. Esperanto only good for the one kill. Rain defends his teammate who was on the defuse. And yeah, a very interesting hold from FaZe there, having three players stacked in the apartments. I almost wonder whether they're experimenting a bit in some of these rounds, seeing what works for them. But hey, they got some kills in the apartments and they set themselves up for that retake pretty nicely. So fair play to them. Yeah, 
that that round was a little crazy. Honestly, I don't know how Brokey managed to win out that fight up in the apartments against Otto. It was a mad prolonged one, and he ended up getting it with the Deagle. It was kind of crazy. But yeah, FaZe, they're beginning to recover this CT side back into a, a relatively decent position now. They should be tying it up, obviously, with the half investment from Contact, as was pointed out. So I'm not expecting a lot in this round, but we've already seen what the Deagles are capable of. So if Contact are able to even get a couple of kills here, keep the economy in a low position for FaZe and then give them the chance to try and bounce back here on their next gun round, I think that kind of is their main goal. Obviously, a bomb plan to be nice as well. They've been loving the A-bombs so, so far. Yeah, other than the, the first couple of rounds, where in the pistol round, for example, Contact were going for those mm -hmm. B plays, that was basically it so far they were contact. struggling on yeah. towards b even on those rounds they won i mean they weren't even landing the ct smokes that's that's true maybe maybe that's why they're not going back to the b site they seem to have some a smokes though so that's good a couple of smokes being deployed over the top here one of them gonna land at a long although there's a molotov which will force them forwards and wow great shot from ships onto brocky that could be the opening into this round well, it, it is the opening into the round. The question is, can they capitalize on it? Can they manage to actually get the round win potentially off the back of it? And that's not too bad. A trade on towards Cold Zero. And with Olaf being too health right now in the P, he is in a lot of trouble. We'll at least be able to confirm one more kill for FaZe before he does go down. But it's given over to Man Advantage. It's given contact this bomb site, And very likely the bomb plant indeed, which will go down. And honestly, I thought Emmy was going to have that shot. But no, that's an issue. The op now has been dropped in the pit. It's only the Deagles that remain. They line up for Esperanto and he just spams away. Very precise Deagle spams. You love to see it. That's possible. Oh, they only had a few players upgrading Kevlar alongside the pistols. And FaZe somehow ended up dropping that one. They've, they're reinvesting all of their money now into this round. If they end up losing this round, at that point, Contact are going to be getting a ninth pretty much for free. And then it'll just be FaZe really trying to fight back into six. So this round is so crucial for them. A lot on the line in this very round for FaZe Clan. If they want to get themselves a decent CT half together, they can really do with winning this one. Nades again used on Banana, but Contact are aware of that. They're not taking too much damage from the early utility. Although that deep smoke has forced them away from that position. So FaZe Clan are going to get some Banana control pretty free here. Obviously, they've used some nades to do so, but I think they'll be pretty happy with that outcome. Elsewhere, Contact trying to take some map control of their own into the apartments. But here we go. Rain running down Banana will push up into that position. They're not actually going to keep anyone aggressive over towards B. Getting a bit of control, I guess more so limiting the control for contact. They're like, okay, that's good enough. We're going to play a little bit more passively. What is more surprising to me now is that they haven't just put the one player there, maybe jump peeking for info to be able to at least get a warning if please come back to get that control to give them the ability to stack a little bit over towards the A side of the map. Where, again, we've pointed out contact have been putting most of their focus, and that does look to be the case in this round as well. They've already got three players in the apartments, two of them grouping up on mid right now. And one small issue is the fact that Cold Zero is the only man who's really pushed out. If we see Contact try and take it in towards Long, they could definitely challenge Cold Zero together. But they're likely just going to smoke it off for now with most of the players being in the apartments. Oh, but the flank now eventually coming down Banana. They need to go quicker. They're going to be completely caught off guard from behind. Yeah, look at the time as well. Nico, that is not the first time we've seen this exact scenario where he runs down Banana, has two free kills for himself. And this one has just crumbled for Contact. Absolutely torn apart. The only casualty for FaZe is called Zira in the end. As I said, over on Long on his own, it's a bit of a risky position. But it's 6-7. to seven. FaZe have gone ahead and bounced back immediately off the back of losing up against the pistols. And have given themselves still the opportunity to try and close out the half with a lead at least. Yeah, Contact might be getting PTSD from these banana flanks if that keeps on happening. Because, yeah, Nico's done that now a couple of times in this game. Got to be aware of that. I wouldn't be surprised if they're constantly watching their back now if they set up those A plays. Because when Nico gets two kills like that from behind, it just it really puts you on the wrong foot straight away. Nice nades at top banana, though. Nico won't be flanking banana this round because the nade stack has taken him out of the round. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. 
Again, given an opportunity over to contact early on in these rounds where they do have the weaker investment that's been giving them a few openings, and they actually are going to bring it towards the B bomb site for once. A little bit of a change up the open and headshot from Esperanto. Will they expect another player in the back of the bomb site? Apparently not. Cold Zero pops out, but is only able to get the one, which is not going to be enough. Faye is again looking like they're going to drop around versus a much weaker investment. This time, at least, there was a few rifles in play for contact. But Faze, they need all of these. As I said, they were trying to claw this back up to nine and slowly but surely over these past few contacts, at least have been able to grind out another few for themselves. They brought it up to eight now. They have themselves a position where they've at least confirmed the lead as they head over to that CT side. With these weapons at least being carried over for Faze, we should see them being able to get a relatively strong buyout. We'll see a couple drops Rain can buy for himself. But Contact, they're still in with the opportunity to even bring it up to nine. Definitely in with a shout right now. Really good shots from Esperanto as well. Or I should just say, I think it was just the one shot because it was the nade kill he got in the first place. But that entry onto B made a big difference. And then Cold Zero was relying on getting multiple kills from the back of the bomb site, which didn't come his way. So an eighth round for contact. They will be taking the lead at the half. Might be able to get a ninth round here as well, though, as both teams buy into the last round on the first half of Inferno. Otto's got the AWP out again. We haven't seen too much from Otto with the AWP so far. He's landed a couple of shots. We'll see if that's about to change here in round 50. Ooh. They wanted to go real quick on that control over towards Banana. Uh, they actually got slowed down by, I believe it was a Molotov initially. Tried to then force the player out of the corner, but Nico was here to help out Rain, and he just gets an instant double spray down. Small bit of team damage there being done. Oh, shit. And they creep out of balcony. Actually does get Olaf somehow. It looked more likely that he was going to be able to find Cold Zero over on long, but nah, the other way around instead. Nico now has been able to find the bomb. All right, Otto gets the wall bank. That actually lets him get onto the bomb site now. Brokey, he was beginning to rotate over to the CT spawn, but I think at this point just wants to try and join up with Cold Zero. They're going to look to try and come in together, knowing that it is very likely they can see the bomb plant at least. But they don't really care about that. With it being the final round of the half, all they need to do is win this one, bring themselves up to seven. And Otto right now is looking towards Banana, spotted by the jump peak right there, but he's going to continue to peek and aggressively actually hits the leg shot on the first with the Tech 9. He does finish off Cold Zero, but unfortunately being swarmed by both of them, there just wasn't, there wasn't really much else that he could do. Brokey was ready for the trade, so seven for Faye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the road to Rio. Contact with a very slight lead right now. 8-7 from the first half. Let's see if they can keep it going into their CT side of Inferno. Yeah, that's... That's the worry here. The phase when they're on the T side as well, obviously they can be a little bit more free with themselves. And in general, towards the end of that previous half, it was certainly FaZe who had picked up and begun to kind of shift momentum in their favor. So it's a little bit worrying here. Right now, FaZe as well, they are going to be focused over towards Banana, where for the moment we're only seeing one contact player. Ships is actually playing passive over towards this side of the map as well. Taking the initial contact from the CT spawn, did spot one player, but because it's so early in the round, they haven't decided to shift this stack at all off of the A bomb site. So as FaZe go forward, they are going to only have that one player to contest, and even then, he's been blocked off in towards construction for now by, by the smoke, by the Molotovs as well that were going over. So we're likely just going to see this bomb going down, and then it being a 5-on-5 five five retake. And even with the defuse kit, that's a difficult position for contact to be in they've got an incendiary as well as a smoke so they have some pieces of utility which could help them here and they're going to need to make the most of them as they start this retake smoke going down for banana brocky taking this fight with the glock he's struggling but he finally gets the kill he was looking for that molotov has landed but the time is still ticking here and the kills are not coming for contact they just can't land the shots finally emmy gets one back but they've got to get on the bob right now and brocky keeps on fragging into a 2v2 but the time is so low let me instantly taken out of the round and cold zero oh, is go going in oh no knife kill olaf trades it out with the glock and everyone goes up in flames with the bomb, but it's FaZe who win the round. Yeah, I, li I like the uh, attempt from Cold Zero there in the end to go for the knife, though. As you had said, the round was already won for them. The time was well too gone. Wasn't able to get it, unfortunately. Would have been a nice boost in economy and also a little bit of a tilter for contact. I, were, you weren't there the last day. I think it was me and Mitch, was it, when Kenny managed to knife Esperanto in the, the game of contact versus G2? 
Yeah, I think that was Mitch. I don't remember that. Yeah, it, it was a crazy one. Kenny was just hiding in the corner. They all walked out onto the A-bomb set and Mirage, and he snuck past a bunch of people and just knifed Esperanto while he was planting the bomb, wow. even though he could have knifed others. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a little bit tilted, I would have said. But um, into this one, Contact obviously have gone for the Force Buy. They weren't successful in being... Uh, Sorry, Faze, when they went for their force buy in the previous half, weren't successful in being able to pick up this force buy. So Contact, they're looking to be able to do so. If they can, of course, they'd regain control. It'd probably be even a little bit better for them because Faze would be stuck down to the 1,400 loss bonus then going into the next round. But Faze, they know that. They've gone for a pretty safe buy for themselves. A couple of UMPs, a couple AKs, and then one MP7, giving them the ability to have overall good weaponry and a decent amount of nades behind it as well. Lots of time for FaZe if they want to use it, but they've got a fair few players close to the B-bomb site, so I'm sure if they get a kill, they'll think about committing to this. Smoke goes down into CT, but the counter utility has done decent damage. Rocky in particular taking the brunt of the nades, down to 28 health. And now FaZe are having second thoughts about that B play. They've got the banana control, so they can stick a couple of players in that position, but the time is ticking here for FaZe Clan. 33 seconds now for them to make up their minds. Yeah, and I mean, they don't have a lot of info about the exact positioning of contact. That was a risky one from Esperanto to be playing up close in that mid smoke. I don't know what exactly he was expecting to find from it. Has two players still in towards the bomb site itself, and Lenny, doing what he can, was able to find a double on the MP9. Unfortunately, not much else, and it didn't quite manage to delay enough either to be able to actually stop that bomb from being planted. So, as it does go down, despite it being a 2-on-3, not the worst position ever for contact. Without a kit, with only the Deagles and the Kevlar, and knowing, of course, that they're going to be on a full eco now in this following round, they do immediately have to just call for that save to come in. I feel like it was a weird choice for Esperanto to be pushed up in the mid-smoke while his two teammates are hiding on the bomb site, Unless they were trying to bait out that he was alone on A so that the other two players on the actual bombsite itself could catch them off guard. But instead, it was Esperanto who just didn't have any chance to really be helped out by teammates. He falls, and instead of having three players to defend the bombsite itself, it's only two. Yeah, and even then, it, it nearly works for them with only the two players, right? If they'd have had a third there, Cold Zero probably would have been traded they out. They had one in the pit, because yeah. then they would have had to have actually worried about an extra angle. Instead, as they were moving up, they were all just looking at the bomb site. It was, it was easy enough for them to just be focused on one angle rather than being caught between a crossfire. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, even though Cold Zero was only focused on the bomb site, it was still not easy for him to get both those kills. He did well to control that spray onto both players, get the double kill onto the site. And that's all FaZe needed at that point. After already having the opening pick on A previously, they win the round. Pistols for contact into this next one. So FaZe Clan now into the lead, starting to really build in this game. Double nades at the top of Banana, not quite connecting. Emmy was making sure to sit back so he wouldn't take that nade damage. And again, FaZe taking some fairly easy Banana control. Yeah, not really being contested. As you'd expect, contact unless they all just wanted to wait around the top and then swing in maybe with a flash or something. I guess that would have been the only way they'd really try and challenge that area, but phase they went towards it, they were able to get themselves up very early on with so much time as well. Obviously, that means they don't have to be committing to B, and that clearly isn't their goal for the moment. The bomb was all the way back on ramp, and they may still look to try and actually push out around brackets and get themselves a little bit of control. And yeah, that does seem to be kind of the aim here for Rain and Cold Zero. It'll limit really any information at all from being found for contact it'll keep the possibilities open for phase to really move towards either bomb site and just kind of keep that in the mind as well of contact and yeah as soon as they show that presence around mid it actually does pull esperanto back around towards a so now they're only going to be dealing with emmy and ships on b smoke for ct but there is a player up on the flower pot i believe yeah emmy's letting them go here finally pulls the trigger and he's staying up on this position. They don't know he's here. He keeps on firing off. The full reload has come through until finally someone shoots at Emmy. He gets away with two kills, but the rest of his team couldn't do too much on the bomb site. So even with Emmy's best efforts, the remaining two contact players don't have much of a chance here. No, overall decent damage though i mean not too bad considering they only had a few pistols really to work with in this round obviously the, the bit they were able to carry over but now moving into the next one they will actually be back onto the full buy the issue is phase have got themselves into the lead being on the t side sure it's, it's obviously not the most comfortable lead but against a team like contact that you do 
of course, put as massive underdogs in this one. You're not really going to be expecting it to be too much more trouble from them from now on. Once they, you feel like for FaZe, once they get their momentum here on the D side going, that it should be really difficult for Contact to stop. But then again, I don't really want to say that because we did just have Hard Legion absolutely slapping Navi about. So who knows? We had quite a few upsets throughout the road to Rio, so can't count any teams out at any point. Brocky in that round got two kills, even though he only did 22 damage. So that's nice for him. Into this one, though. Letney's got himself an Org. There is an Orc in the hands of Otto and one in the hands of Brokey on the T side. So both teams picking up Orps into this first gun round. See who can get the better of that battle if it comes through. So far, though... Pretty safe start to the round for both teams. Banana control being gathered, and Otto lands that shot. Second time, he lands it again. Olaf doesn't even get to see an opponent in this round. He just gets spanned through the wall with two excellent shots. Oh, that's just... I, I don't know. That, that, that's just unfortunate for Olaf. He's going to be a little bit angry about that one, maybe. Being down into the four on five already kind of forced them to make some decisions to, to see if they could pull back kills, or at least for Cold Zero that was the case. He decided to go out through the long smoke and being completely blinded, I believe, as he came out of it. Ends up being just an easy frag for that player up close. Esperanto bringing it into the five on three, and would it be in that position? FaZe Clan have immediately called to bring it back over towards B. Unfortunately, that smoke goes down at pretty much the perfect time to go ahead and delay them for at least a few more seconds. And with that, they've made the decision to bring Esperanto over to B. That might be the dagger in this round for FaZe Clan's chances. Having three players to deal with as they move into the B-bomb site won't be easy. Nico, the man, currently looking for the entry kills. Oh, he gets that first and the follow-up. Nico taking heads as he enters the B-bomb site. And Esperanto's rotate isn't relevant because he's stuck behind the CT smoke. So he can't assist on the hold on the site. Now Nico gets an AWP into his hands because he's low on health. And a 3v3 post plant with Nico going for more. A third kill on the round for Nico. He's made all the difference, but Esperanto. Esperanto's position is a very sneaky one. Nico is definitely a dead man, but Rain is just waiting behind Triple Box, playing it patiently, forcing contact to make the play, and Rain eventually gets the headshot he was looking for. It's all on Letney, and the time is against him at this point. Rocky gets the headshot, and FaZe pick up the round thanks to some great entry work from Nico. Yeah. God, been able to pull that one back. It looked like, as you said, it was set up perfectly with the three players. It should have been a bit too much for FaZe to deal with, but the smokes being down, it was able to give them a little bit of room to isolate the fights. Nico just went huge. And Contact lose a round that they very much needed if they wanted to start building their way back into this game once again here early on on the CT side. It's been four now in a row for FaZe since kicking off the second half. They likely will be getting a fifth off the back of that one as well as Contact are only able to spend that spare money. A positive being, of course, at this point, full loss bonus going into the next round. But even then, at that point, it will be 12 to 8 most likely for FaZe. And Contact will really be feeling the pressure. Again, though, not a lot on the line from this game. Contact are already down there in 8th place. They've yet to get a series win. FaZe are up there in first, having not dropped a single one. Even if they do end up losing this, it doesn't affect their placement. They're still going to be getting that first seed. So it's... It, it, it's one for contact where it doesn't make that big of a deal, but you said it would be a nice victory. It'd just be nice to have. Yeah, you want at least one win on the board. Against a team like FaZe as well, you can be like, yeah, good are matches as well. You also pointed out that most of them, they were being able to win maps and such. Mm. And keeping some of them quite close, if they can get that win versus FaZe, they'd be like, okay, yeah, we had, we had some tough games. We performed okay. Let's just make sure we do better next time. But right now, anyway, FaZe making it look a little bit easier so far throughout this T-side. Opening kill, I like the idea. They put auto-boosted up so that he can maybe catch someone off guard. But you've seen FaZe just use all their utility as they move forward, including those flashes. That looked like a pretty specific lineup with that smoke drop by Letney. I think there may have been a gap on the left side for him to try and work with. It's not going to matter, though, because FaZe Clan aren't committing to the A-bomb site. They're going all the way back to Banana, where Ships is solo holding B with a Deagle. He's got one flashbang, which might slow FaZe down slightly, but the rotate is so far away. Ships, though, with this smoke down it, it's actually helpful, but Cold Zero just shoots him through the smoke. That's, could that's have just been. rude. It could have been helpful. Oh, uh, yeah, no. He's ruined. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Un unlucky for Ships just chilling on the other side of the smoke. That was really the best chance that he would have had to, to catch a few people off guard coming through the smoke. Just deny it and 
having Kevlar on Letney and Esperanto, I guess, makes it a worthwhile save just to, to boost up their own buy slightly in this next round. It doesn't make a big deal if they, if they actually were to go down, so they are going to be kind of hanging around in the spawn, hoping someone will try and exit this way, but already having full, full control of Banana means FaZe don't have to. They, they know that they have more to give away in this round than they have to gain by actually going after these final players, so it's not really something they want to commit towards too heavily. A couple of players at mid, so maybe Contact could spot those players if they wanted to peek. But they decide not to go for it. Faye's able to build up some bank off the back of that round win with so many players surviving. And here comes the buy for Contact, but at this point, with them being 12-8 down, it really is a much-needed round for them. Orp in the hands of Otto again. Esperanto with the silenced M4, while the rest of the team have the unsilenced version at their disposal in this round. So far, Banana Control has been pretty easy for FaZe, but this time there's a three-man B stack from Contact, so they're looking to fight for this Banana Control, and oh, Brocky just gets one straight through the smoke. Yeah, and Rain being able to find an opening as well has just given them this A bombsite pretty much. It's all going to be on one man to defend. Lightning in the pit is able to get one. But Cold Zero dropping out from above is just a bit too much for him to deal with. It's going to be the A bombsite already gone. Contact having been forced to call for the save within just moments of the round having begun. It just all spiraled out of control for them. This is a little bit heartbreaking for Contact after they had such a great starter on this map as well. And Obviously, with D2 coming up next, that's where I expect them to really struggle. This time, FaZe do want to hunt. Obviously, with the weapons in the hands of Contact, taking them away would destroy any sort of investment in the following round for them. If they were to save both of the weapons, they could have dropped over and actually had a, def a decent enough full buy in the next round. No longer the a possibility, though. It's only Esperanto who actually can possibly save, which I think he should be able to. Cold Zero moving in, but unless... Okay, Esperanto's sticking around, so maybe there's a small chance. But no, he actually gets to kill himself. So, yeah, the AK carried over in the end. A decent recovery, but around there, I'm not sure what exactly they're really going to be able to afford. Yeah, FaZe have been on the up and up as this game has gone on. Contact have been on the way down. And in this round, they are pretty down with the buy they have. Four Deegs and then the one AK in the hands of Esperanto. Esperanto's been playing pretty well. He's landed some nice shots. So let's see what he's going to offer us up in this round. A couple of nades on Banana doing little damage to Olaf, who is the one man for FaZe taking control of this position, while the rest of the team look at top mid. And as it stands, top mid has been left wide open by contacts. They're playing passively back on the A bomb site. Yeah, once this rap comes in, it's going to be so difficult to deal with. Yeah, it's not even going to spot it initially. What? Otto, what the hell? Gets two of them. My Deagle would not reset that quickly. Rain hits him with a nice shot, but it was Otto who hit him with the nice shot, if you know what I mean. Olaf Meister does manage to recover a small bit there by getting Lightning, but there's still one more player on this bomb site they need to deal with, and it is the AK of Esperanto. Pops out for the double spray down, spins around to get Nico, and there it is. Contact, they get another round on the board eventually, but it is off the back of some absolutely heroic players from two of those players, so is this something that they can rely on consistently? Yeah, I love how Esperanto played that, just sneakily on the yeah. bomb site. In that position, waiting for his opportunity. FaZe overlooked that position, and it's a double AWP setup now for Contact after that round win. Esperanto taking the secondary AWP for the team. Yeah, he's definitely been the, the main standout performer so far for Contact, and Esperanto gets another kill at the start of this round. Unfortunately, Brocky already got the opening pick for FaZe, and Letney gets an AWP straight into his hands off the back of the nade. So the double AWP setup continues for Contact. Interesting setup. Not one you see as common as some other maps here on the CT side of Inferno, but it is also viable. They do have, at the moment, one of them being entrusted as the sole B defender, so that certainly allows for a little bit of a gamble here, which is needed when they are in the 4 on 4. They've Emmy around long, just kind of holding off to make sure that that wrap won't be a possibility again from FaZe. 
A yeah, minute and five seconds remaining, so it's not like the T's are, are rushed into making this decision. But as you see Nico trading out the op for a rifle there, it does seem like they've uh, they've kind of come to the conclusion of where they want to end this. They are going to bring it over towards A, and that's just as Emmy rotates back over to B as well. So it looks like they have made the correct decision. I think they'll be hoping so, or at least assuming so at this point. They are committing to this A bomb site, so here we go. Letney with the AWP from Pit gets one kill before Nico trades, and those flash assists come through on both frags. Nico and Cold Zero with two entries onto the bomb site, and now that they've got the bomb planted again, these retakes are so difficult on Inferno. Contacts have had some tough times on this A site. Even when they're getting some trades, it's never really enough to keep them in the round. And again, they're going to have to save off the back of losing the A bomb site. This is looking like it could be, yeah. As you, I mean, at least they can they can drop for this next round. But if they lose the the following one at that point, then obviously it is going to be phase already up on fifteen and leaving contact on a, a very weak investment into what could be the final round to try and keep themselves in the matchup. So this is potentially their last full gun round. Because they're shooting shooting Olaf, knife them as well. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. They were all good anyway. Olaf's just been kind of chilling this game. He really hasn't had to do as much as everyone else. He's 8 to 13 right now, but uh, as you can see with the score going quite convincingly for FaZe, it hasn't really been much of a necessity for him to step up. You have Rain, Coldzera, and Broki all playing quite well. Nico up on 20 kills right now as well. Esperanto, he is the top fragger on the server, to be fair, with 24. He doesn't really have his teammates helping him out quite as much, though. Yeah, I've seen a much, a much more top-heavy scoreboard for contact. I'm seeing the, the save game and spam. That was the only decision they could make in that position. <laughs> let's be real, Hawker. With, with the money that they had on two of those players as well, allowing them to drop, it, it gives them the full gun round here. If those players died, then they maybe would have only had a couple of rifles. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Twitch chat, if they were playing matchmaking, they'd have just gone for it and not have money in this round. Because let's be real, they'd have lost. No faith in you guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have been very likely to win that retake. It's definitely the right call. Keeping themselves with a buy into this next round. They do need to start winning rounds at this point, though. There's not much more room for saving when you're 14-9 behind. Smoke from Esperanto. Some okay, awkward nades on Banana. He throws a Molotov right into his teammate's back. Eventually, the nade will follow, but only a bit of damage done to Olaf. And yeah, this has been the general theme at the start of the round for FaZe. Olaf will just fight for banana control while the rest of the players look for some action at A. And they're going to go straight out through the apartments. Yeah, very quickly. Otto was full on blinded. He actually did hit the leg on towards Rain. I'm not sure if he hit that wild blind or before. But either way, the main issue is that he goes down. His teammates are not able to find much either. The trades again are going to go in favor of FaZe Clan. They wipe up the A bomb site defense and get the bomb planted this time the, the two players for contact are a lot closer they're not straight away back on that b bomb site just trying to save so you would imagine that they are going to try and move in for this one at least but it's still not going to be easy if they lose this a weak buy in the following round the fight to keep themselves in it and as soon as you see brokey being able to take down emmy the save has to be called for for ships and i think they were already kind of beginning to back away at that point i think they had decided yeah we need to save these two weapons emmy begun to jump back over towards mid and just got caught by the op so that's a bit unfortunate they will at least be able to save over to one up. No way anyone on FaZe can reach him at this point, so he will be good. Yeah, the AWP saved at the very least, but the game is not looking good for Contact right now on their map pick. They came out pretty strong at the start of this game, but it's all fallen apart for them here on their CT side. FaZe have been able to exploit especially that A site with some fast plays, some fast trades. The flashbangs in that round were especially good. Otto got caught very close range with the AWP, like you were saying. Not a position that he would have been too happy with. And now FaZe just need one more round to claim victory here on the first map of this series. Again, these nades on Banana for contact. FaZe have done a, a really solid job at generally just avoiding these nades early. Olaf there takes a bit of damage, but you're okay with that. And now FaZe use a couple of nades of their own, and they take away Banana control, just like that. 
Yeah, as you said, beating out the nades so that they were ready then to get that control real quick, not really giving the room for contact to, to try and actually approach themselves. What you hope for with those nades is that you'll be able to keep the T's off banana for a while and then normally try and follow up, but not nah, contact playing actually quite passive on B. It is just going to be the straight-up commitment. All five players were around there for the T side. Nico's actually gotten himself a team kill. That could give a chance back to contact. So yeah, Pranto trying to play through and see if he could find one to pull it back down to the three on three, but no, not allowed. Nico, true to smoke there, is going to be able to finish him off, and it's looking like this is it here on map number one. Unfortunately, Letney and Otto are left to try and save the day. We've seen the saves before. Obviously, it's not an option this time. Absolutely not. Letney's moving on in. He goes down, and Otto is sitting on Banana. He really has got to get a move on if he wants to win, which is not looking likely at this point. Otto will try his best, but his best isn't going to be enough on this occasion. FaZe are about to take this map 16-9. Otto trying to pad some stats. Oh no, the knife, the knife. It's a swarm of players and it's 